The White Plains Public Library presents The Battle of White Plains, words and video production by Austin Olney, with research assistance by Ben Himmelfarb. For residents of White Plains, the American Revolution hit very close to home. George Washington commanded troops over the ground that currently comprises the city, which in 1776 was a small village. The Battle of White Plains was part of the larger invasion of New York City in 1776 and was a great learning experience for the Continental Army. The Army evolved and grew a lot during 1776, adapting to the challenges of defeating the greatest military presence of the day. George Washington saw that preventing the British from moving north up the Hudson Valley was crucial to protecting the colonies. The British forces involved in the Battle of White Plains were commanded by General William Howe. He received orders to stop the insurgency, which was quickly turning into a war. The British soldiers present were professional, many with experience. The Loyalists were colonists who wished to remain under English rule and often fought on the side of the English. Also present were Native American tribes such as the Iroquois. And most importantly, at the Battle of White Plains, there were German Hessian mercenaries who were hired by the British government to fight after the government failed to raise enough troops from its own population. The American forces, the Continental soldiers and militias, were commanded by General George Washington. Many were untrained, many were simply farmers. Many of the men were either very young or very old. Also present were Native Americans who were allied with the colonists. After the outbreak of the war in 1775, the colonists successfully kicked the British out of Boston. By March 1776, the British were forced to evacuate and sailed to Halifax, Nova Scotia. There, they communicated with England for more troops. Both George Washington and Howe knew that if you controlled New York, you controlled the Hudson River and power of communication throughout the colonies. The British had a grand strategy to break the colonies in half. Washington knew that the British were coming to New York, so he began moving troops to Brooklyn as early as May. He's trying to guess every move the British might make, and this was no small task. Um, ships were sailing from Halifax, Nova Scotia, and uh, about 45 warships were massing off of Staten Island. Uh, another 350 ships are racing across the Atlantic to join them. There are hundreds of British soldiers on each ship with many cannons. They have the power to fire accurately from a mile away. So the Colonials are digging in at Brooklyn Heights, and they have no idea when the British will attack. It's a waiting game. It was during this time that the Declaration of Independence was passed. There was a new notion of independence, and the colonies erupted over this. There were celebrations from patriots all over. So in the meantime, the British land on Staten Island unopposed, and more ships begin arriving from England. Eight days after the Declaration was signed, Two ships sail up the Hudson River and unleash the power of their guns. New York was shot at in a power show, and George Washington was furious about this. By August, the full armada of British ships were massing off of New York City, and it was just acres and acres of white sail. There were approximately 32,000 British troops preparing to storm the land. After much anticipation, the British landed on Long Island unopposed to begin the Battle of Long Island. So, on August 27th, 15,000 British soldiers are marching towards Brooklyn. And this is the first time fighting would take place in this new war of independence. It would end up being the largest battle of the war. When the two forces collided, two British columns attacked in a frontal assault, while a third group swung around the colonial defenses to their left flank and just created complete chaos with the Continentals. The British came from the rear, and the Continental Army panicked and fled towards Brooklyn Heights. So the, the British are closing in on Brooklyn Heights, and the Colonials are surrounded. General Howe anticipates a quick mop-up of the rebels in the morning. However, at night, George Washington and his army of 9,000 escaped to Manhattan. The whole army moved in silence, with every ferry and fishing boat available. There was a fortunate fog in the air that lasted until morning. They snuck right by the British, and it is said that Washington left in the last boat. The fact that the British missed this opportunity to capture the entire army 
is one of the greatest blunders of the war. So by September, the army is in full retreat. The British land at Kipps Bay largely unopposed, and 4,000 British troops are storming Manhattan. So there's this great retreat from the island. After Howe and the British landed on Manhattan, George Washington said, Are these the men with whom I am to defend America? The Americans retreat to Harlem Heights and actually stop the British, which increased morale, considering how they were kicked out of Brooklyn so easily. As they're retreating, New York City is burning, POWs are taken and thrown into ships to rot, and the loss of New York City was George Washington's first defeat as a commander. Washington crossed the Harlem River at King's Bridge to lead his men into Westchester. The army camped in the hills of Yonkers and Washington in his quarters on Valentine Hill. During this time, the British moved three warships up the Hudson to Terrytown to encourage Westchester loyalists to support the crown, but the local Tories were suppressed by Continental soldiers. Two weeks before the Battle of White Plains, George Washington issued general orders. How much better it will be to die honorably, fighting in the field than to run home covered with shame and disgrace, even if the cruelty of the enemy should allow you to return. A brave and gallant behavior for a few days and patience under some little hardship may save our country and enable us to go into winter quarters with safety and honor. Initially, the British tried to land at Throg's Neck, but after facing resistance, they turned to Pell's Point. The British began moving north slowly. They were in unfamiliar territory and using unreliable maps, and they made camp north of New Rochelle along the road to Scarsdale. Relating to this, General Howe once said, To get upon the Americans, principal communication with Connecticut with a view to forcing them to quit their strongholds in the neighborhood of King's Bridge, and if possible, to bring them to action. Now George Washington withdrew most of his army to White Plains, and the entire area was most unsuited to military maneuvering, which is one of the reasons for Washington's decision to stand at White Plains. Defenses in Valentine Hill and White Plains were erected for protection. The Continentals dug two long lines of entrenchments, two of them in parallel, stretched across the line of hills above White Plains, from the top of Purdy Hill at a point immediately east of the Bronx River, and eastward over Rocky Heights to Merritt Hill on the east side of Silver Lake, at that point known as Horton's Pond. And also there's about 600 men on Chatterton Hill, many of whom are untried militia. Continental Major General Charles Lee said upon reaching the summit of Chatterton Hill, Yonder is the ground we ought to occupy. The British move into a position south of Chatterton Hill. They divide into eight columns, and music from the bands could be heard all over White Plains. And the British decided Chatterton Hill was of strategic importance and must be secured. And eventually, four to seven thousand British and Hessian men stormed the hill in three separate divisions. And they were forced back once, and they were forced back again. The third time, Hessian mercenaries moved under cover woods towards the right flank of the defenders in a surprise attack, and all defensive positions were overrun, and soldiers on horseback fought the Americans who didn't even have bayonets, and they fled, so the British occupied the hill. During the battle, a column of British marched down the road to Connecticut, now Lake Street, and were trying to attack the left flank. However, American soldiers lay concealed on the hill and surprised the British by shooting at them with a cannon, pushing them back to their camp. So after this, the British are waiting for attack and they're delayed by weather, and the Americans move. They have lines that ran from the positions on Meriton and Hatfield Hills and Mount Misery and Miller Hill in North Castle. The British tried to flank the hills of Miller Hill and Mount Misery by crossing the Bronx River and climbing to Travis Hill. Miller Hill actually looked down on this, and Americans shot cannons down at them where the British retreated. And these were the last shots of the campaign at White Plains. Eventually, Washington and most of the army crossed the Hudson at Peekskill, and Howe chose not to follow the Continentals. The aftermath of this battle resulted in a baffled Howe returning to New York City, leaving Washington's army still in the field with the glories of Trenton and Princeton just over the horizon.